Have you ever lost feeling in your feet? Ears ringing, heart pounding? Have your palms ever been so uncomfortably sweaty? Sound familiar? It's not lose yourself by Eminem, but these are all symptoms of stage fright. Standing in front of you right now, I can't feel my feet. My ears are ringing, my heart is pounding, and my palms are sweaty. What do we fear more than death? Most would say, absolutely nothing. But surprisingly, more people are afraid of speaking in front of a crowd than they are of dying. Although dying is inevitable, public speaking can make you feel like you are actually dying. Statistically speaking, 75% of this room has experienced glossophobia, or the fear of public speaking. I hope you can see the irony of me giving a TED talk about this subject. Stage fright has crippled me for as long as I can remember, but I've never wanted it to rule my life. I don't think it will truly disappear, but I continue to conquer my fear. As a little kid, I was quite shy growing up. I remember being the new kid in first grade and not being able to talk to a single person. When I was faced with the opportunity to speak in front of a crowd, I would cry. Slowly, I began to make friends, and one day my best friend shoved me into the audition room for the spring musical, The Little Mermaid. Without gadgets and gizmos aplenty, I had just my tone-deaf self. That day, my best friend had both literally and figuratively shoved me into public speaking, which has transformed who I am and how I express myself. As I got older, I became louder and intentionally placed myself in situations where I'd be forced to speak in front of large crowds. In middle school, I competed in, I competed in national competitions, eventually landing where I am today. For the most part, public speaking has been something that has been able to empower me and give me the courage to do exactly what I've done throughout all of my life. Let me set the stage for you. In eighth grade me, unfortunately, the same five foot three inches, standing in the center of a crowded room during the speech competition finals. I felt defenseless and exposed, but I was determined to push through. Okay, I want you to close your eyes for a second and take a deep breath. Do you feel the anticipation in the air? How about the blood roaring through your ears? Are you trembling yet? I'm not the only one who's felt this before. I'm sure it's familiar for some of you. This is how I felt before the beginning of my cancer, we have an answer speech. Cancer has been a really difficult topic for me to talk about, not only then, but even now. My grandma was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for over six years. This speech not only gave me the opportunity to express my emotions, but also inform my audience about cancer prevention techniques. Public speaking has allowed me to initiate change in my community simply through my words. By deliberately placing myself in situations where I am forced to speak in front of large crowds, and today is no different, I understand that public speaking does not, con pub stage fright does not control me. Rather, I control it. Through my experiences with overcoming stage fright, I understand that I am not the only one who fears public speaking. Others, do too. Through my experiences, I and my own struggle with public speaking, I began to search for nearby schools that would allow me to come and teach. After emailing over 25 of them, I found the perfect one. 
Chukupole High School in Adwi Nakalam, India, stole my heart. There, I was able to give my students my passion for learning and for, for public speaking and nurture their own hidden passions too. I was able to meet my, one of my greatest mentors, Ms. Suda Chukupoli, who showed me each of the struggles my students faced every day. Public speaking has empowered me and given me the courage to motivate others. Because I know how transformative it can be, I founded Speak for the Future in the summer of 2016 to help students overcome the same stage fright that I battle. Speak for the Future is a nonprofit dedicated towards teaching students public speaking and creative writing, as well as combating child and marriages for girls by providing scholarships. I am proud to say that I have been able to develop and teach a curriculum to over 250 students, raise over $4,000, which is enough for 40 girls to go to school, and build a library at Chukapoli High School. The time I spent as a part of the Chukapoli High School community has given me a lifetime worth of memories. Not only was I able to nurture my students' hidden passions, but I was able to give them my hard work and dedication as I witnessed their infectious enthusiasm for learning. My female students especially went from furiously writing in their notebooks to powerfully voicing their opinions on issues affecting them and their communities. Two students in particular, and their stories affected me greatly. To start off class, I would ask a simple public speaking prompt. What is one problem that you have faced, and how would you solve it? A seventh grader named Bhavna caught me completely off guard with her answer. She walked to the front of the room and began to speak, and then cried. It was heartbreaking to watch. After a couple moments, she collected herself and began to say that her mother had committed suicide a week ago. A seventh grader telling her class that her mother had committed suicide. Words that no teenager should have to ever utter left her mouth. She began to say that she did not know what to do. With her mother gone and left with an abusive father, her situation was far from perfect. However, over time, she harnessed her emotions and made a change in her community by advocating for mental health awareness. Another student who deeply impacted me was Anitha. During a recess break, I approached Anitha and asked why she wasn't running around with all of her friends. She told me she had been severely injured after being hit by a drunk driver. And after five painful surgeries, she is finally able to walk again, but not without difficulty. In class, she would often come in and start furiously writing in her notebook at a mile an hour but never being the one to speak up. Her experience had been so traumatic that she did not want to talk about it. Her public speaking gave her the ability to empower herself and advocate for drunk driving regulations by gaining the attention of officials after speaking at the speech competition finals. After listening to my students present, I realized that they just wanted to give and receive love, happiness, and knowledge, just like the rest of us. They fought the odds and disproved every preconceived notion someone may have about them. Whether they're male or female, they fight every day for the right to learn, to explore, and to improve the world around them, and it is a privilege to help them fight. Since my students have been able to harness the power of public speaking, I challenge you to also use this tool to make a change. Now the question remains, how can public speaking help you? 
make sure you have your notebooks out because here are four steps to making yourself a more confident and captivating speaker. One of my favorite pastimes is baking from scratch. Everything from red velvet cakes to plum bread are a go in my oven. Public speaking is just like baking. Let's start with the icing on the cake. That's confidence. Before you even begin to say a word, the crowd has already made a judgment about you. Public speaking is all about how people perceive you. Your first impression is the lasting impression, and your confidence is the energy that the crowd absorbs. Now, when you're making your cake, don't be afraid to add that extra cinnamon or nutmeg. You'd be surprised how a dash of flavor can transform not only your dessert, but also your presentation. Varying your tone and volume is just that. It's the simple dash of flavor that keeps your audience engaged. You want to be loud enough to be heard, but not soft enough that the back of the room can't hear you. Sometimes, softness can be used to your advantage when you're talking about a sad topic. However, increasing your volume can work for emphasis. In the US, 27 million Americans are affected by stage fright every day. Now, let's go back to one of my favorites, eye contact. This is something that almost everyone struggles with. And as a baker, you have three essential ingredients, sugar, butter, and flour. And eye contact is just that. It's the key to your audience's heart. Try to avoid scanning the room. We're humans. We're not robots trying to analyze the situation, but rather we're trying to evoke emotion. So don't be afraid to look someone directly in the eye. I promise you won't turn to stone. Looking above or to the side of someone's head can make you seem disinterested. So if eye-to-eye -eye contact makes you feel intimidated, find somewhere a little more friendly to look at, such as the forehead or the nose. But just like any good baker knows, there can always be too much of one ingredient. Use eye contact in a measured way. The most effective manner is to split the room into three different sections and spend three to five seconds in each section. If you're feeling afraid, find a friendly face. I personally feel a lot happier when I see someone smiling at me in the crowd. Now, the final piece that wraps up your presentation is the plate that you serve it on. Gestures are a key component that add your personality into the mix. To grab your audience's attention, use your hands with purpose. Now that the cake is complete, let's quickly review what we have learned. Eye contact, confidence, tone, volume, and gestures are your key components for a powerful speech. Time is of the essence, and with the minute to midnight, we're here to speak now and for the future. At this very moment, I still can't feel my feet, but it's okay to be afraid. I am a public speaker after all. I watched my students transform from timid and unsure to confident and well-spoken as they face their fears. They have developed the ability to speak for the future, and I hope that you can too. Change must happen now and not a minute after midnight. Thank you.